got quite a bit out of that bottom lane in terms of levels. He's going to find his level 3 at this hard camp now. And what we, I think we didn't see on camera was that Fnatic actually tried to kill him in the lane. They use Edict, they just start running him down with Lushrak and Bane just hitting him. Because they want to bait out the Surge and then Nightmare. And then ultimately they take him down to about oh, half mid one, oh. real trouble, Fear initiating in. And now he's got to actually consume up the very fire. The bottle will arrive but he can't get a charge off in time. EG will take first blood. Ohio was coming down under the cover of that invis room, but if you just went in, rotate into the mid. Is that like when PPD, for example, gets some space to get levels? Because it's very difficult to put anyone else in there up against the Viper. Mm, Fear could also get his track that way. Uh, lane in the mid lane, because... You know, him being mid... Oh, Ohio. Oh. Top lane, it started again. All well, the boys in the panel called it. Hits the invis into Iron Shell, and the damage started on Ohio, and all PBD do, had to do was walk out of the trees. And now that's 2 0 in favor of EG Samael, falling very low in the mid to the attack from mid one. Dyer's bottom tower. <laughs> and this is what we need to keep an eye out for Fnatic. So we're, we're, we've uh, talked about mid how one. Oh, is he dead again? It yep. looks like he's dead again. He really is. There's a prophet. Started with a tornado. Proper comes in too late, sprout. and he, he's, he's so low on levels because he hasn't got that much out of the offlane. PBD's done a really great job of zoning out Ohio that you don't have that Radiant's wrath of nature. You don't have nature's profit for that once he'll take a couple of stacks or, uh, up against Mushi. So this event's getting more and more and more. EG also have a lineup which it wouldn't be too difficult just to slip inside the Roche pit. Well, they just keep farming, stacking, mid one again. Some mail. This time it's Vendetta attack. Fear will come as well. And we've basically got the Invis Bash Brothers just rotating across the map, finding anyone they want to kill. And Viper, who's normally difficult to kill, is proving to be like paper. He must be really regretting his skill build right now. <laughs> I actually think if he had gone for Classic 113, he might not have died a single time. But EG obviously just taking advantage of his confidence in the mid lane. I'm not sure if they read his They're going to go again. Build, but... Samael has, has uh, Illusion Rune, so they're able to go underneath that tower. Arteezy will land the stun as well. But Ohio, he's low, but not low enough. Mushi comes in with the Pulse Nova. The Nightmare from Net actually making it difficult for Mushi to pump out the damage. But they do still have enough. As Nyx Assassin picked off. Uh, some very good levels. He's level 5 now in minute 7 on Bounty. If Dice Bounty has a bad game, sometimes you see him getting level 6 around like minute 15, and that's just that's just not going to happen this game. But EG read it. Like, they know that Fnatic are going to be pushing in this Dice top lane. Surprisingly, though, they leave Arteezy up here. And with the Sprout, they got pretty damn good vision of him. The Treans kind of stopped chasing Arteezy into the trees. He's not TPing out just yet. In fact, he's wrapping around behind. And Samael surged forward, looking for a target, sitting inside Vendetta. DJ dropping very, very low. The powers in cask as well. Mushi can't escape from this one. They back him back in again. DJ will drop Ohio. He was sent back by the Genesis. The last ditch effort in Ohio. He can't even do that. The body will be sent home to his family as Net. He's also now managed to grab the aggro of the creep wave and he's got fear hot in his tail. Janata's off cooldown. All they gotta do is just rip into into Net. Yeah, they the may not be able to reach him though. Like the face boots are there from fear, but he doesn't want to trigger them. Oh like they managed to wrap around the town, they had a creep wave on top of it. They weren't really seeing EG, but like, they're still playing up against double invis, this Nyx Assassin and Bounty Radiant's Hunter. And again, down. here comes the gank, they go after DJ, and they'll find him. This is going to start to be track kills coming the way of EG, and the money will just start to skyrocket. Especially as they'll start pushing down buildings as well, because they still haven't taken a tier 1 tower. But you're 8-1 in, and you've already got a 2.5k advantage without taking a tower, and you're actually but Viper died. That was one thing that probably EG couldn't bank on. Like, the non-corrosive skin build. But now DJ, here we go again. Nets in the neighborhood, they need to try and save DJ, but they cannot do it. But they will see Samel, the dust went out, so they both have a vision on Samel as well. Sphere, if they can keep up with them. And Ohio TPs himself in a little bit further forward, but now the Sprout actually blocks up the rest of his teammates. They have to run around the tree line. And this actually helps Samel to escape. Samel actually carrying it, that, uh, that crawling blade, so he's able just to get himself outside of the Sprout. And both fear and smell expend the time of the dust and just walk away. Ancient experience. This is... Like, you, you're not able to make any kind of plays. Like, maybe if the Viper actually had a better time in mid and you had a mech, then this five-man push from Fnatic would be a hell of a lot scarier. Like, you wouldn't even want to go into a team fight if you're EG. Let alone have the option to actually find Picos, but now they're going to go. Some mail finds a stun over on net, the follow up from Arteezy. They get another one, Fear. He was trapped inside the Sprout for a short period of time. Again, they go with a dust as Mushi actually isolates Fear up near the Ancients. He's going to find that pick off himself as Ohio DJ and mid one. They're all chasing after a new target. A double stun from Samael. I'll guess she gives space for Arteezy to escape once again. So it ends up just being a one for one trade off. 
At this point in the game, maybe you're actually happy with that as Fnatic. Oh, you definitely are. You got the kill bounty on the... Still hasn't used his vendetta just yet. Fear's doing the scouting as Fnatic are moving around in force. Dyer's Very good ward. Yeah, it's basically a 4-1 at the moment, though, because you still got that push going on on the top lane. A Fnatic now they actually dropped down the sentry ward. With the Chen army around the side, they've actually scouted out Fear. So they understand what's going on, but that ward, as you said, from EG, it sees everything. Ned initiated on. Can they find the kill? The hand of God kicks in. Ned, he's going to nightmare. Can't deny himself up. He's sent back by the Chen with the brain sap. He'll stay alive. The death ward not doing enough from PPD. And this is the good best fight the Fnatic's had so far until the back wall from Universe. They've still picked up PPD. The double stun from Arteezy. Uh, they're not going to follow it through. Mid one and Ned, they're chasing over. And EG, they're just they're just legging it out. They've had enough of this. That looks like a fair rain out of. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm not sure what's going on. We're okay. We're good. I just I'm just panicking over here. Don't don't You're worry. You're cool. Relax, Cinder. We're good. <laughs> With that said, though, I probably should switch my batteries. So. Oh, fanatic. They're going on the mid lane. PPT being stunned up. Mushi actually didn't start with the Yules this time around. Use the lightning to slow down PPD, and this is what we're talking about with Fnatic, where all you gotta do is just run yourself in, find yourself a kill, and then instantly take an objective after. Edict's on cooldown for the moment, and they still have to be a little bit cautious, they don't know exactly what Arteezy's managed to pick up. It's an SMY, so there's no blink dagger for Arteezy, and in fact, uh, he's getting close, yeah, now he's actually visible to Fnatic. So they're very aware of it. But with the army of Treants, the Chen army behind him, and Edict Dyer's coming back off cooldown, Mushi is still attack. very defensive on the back line. He's refusing to show himself, while the tier 2 tower is slowly being whittled away, the fortification will wear off Nartizi. They found Ohio, to mail again the double stun with the impal, but Ohio is protected by the Nightmare for a moment, and it's back from Universe, absolutely perfect. At least the Earth will stop that death ward, but Fnatic are going to lose absolutely everyone in the mid lane. It's a double kill for Arteezy, almost a full team wipe, and it probably will be. Nyx Assassin's got the blink so he can catch up to net, and they will find it. A full team wipe up against Fnatic, EG with a great... A great fight, and Fnatic, they looked good, they looked in a position, or at least a position they wanted to have, but EG just played it out so well. And try to make a play, because they got some information about the bounty hunter. He might teleport top and look for PPD, that's exactly what they're going to do. Very nice here from Fnatic, should net them a kill. Uh, a little bit of layering of stuns here, but, or disable, but that's fine. Oh, career! Yeah, that shouldn't be there. PPD really wanted that 19 minute earn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, B, B, K, B, and jump into the fight. They Maybe can't maybe really stop that. It's, this could be an Axe Viper game, honestly, because there's one hard, like, very strong core on the enemy team that you want to shut down. I think in those oh, cases, Viper will need to stay alive in order to actually get that kind of money. Mid yeah. one. <laughs> Dead one. <laughs> hey. He's now died five times in, in the first 20 minutes. And That's Roche, too, I think. Yeah, it should be, but they will have a trade-off um, in the last fight. Yep. Now there's an Aegis. Sven almost oh, has... Oh, this is nice for Mushi, or uh, is AC. it? Oh, it's night time, so the first one's going to be revealed. It's going to be Samel. Throws off the Spire Carapace, and the silence will buy him a little bit of time. Mushi, oh, he's just going to fiend script and pulse Nova it down. And this is a nice kill for Loshrak. Another 614 gold injected into him. And that's actually... Go with that. Uh, net. <laughs> Interesting engagement. Net's gonna actually dust up Fear, and Fear's gonna track up Net. As Net walks back over the rest of his team, Samael blinks himself forward. They're just chasing after him. With the extra Dagon damage from Samael, he has enough to find that pickup before Fnatic can really do anything. And they got the track off. I think Chen's dead too. <sighs> they may even lose the Chen army on to boot. I know, DJ, there's Samael right behind him. That movement speed. There's just no way to stop EG from chasing you down like this. And again, Ohio, like he's the only one that could potentially relieve the pressure. It's not, it doesn't really matter that much. If EG's game plan isn't to push high ground yet, they could just use this to farm another wave. Oh, looks like they're gonna try and, see and... They're actually gonna battle against the split push. Arteezy gets BTs yeah. over on this vent, so he can come back. Oh, Ohio, top lane, Fear of the Sprout, but of course he still had the vision. Thanks for the track, so... Ohio has been doing the best he possibly can to keep that top lane pressured and EG back, but you knew it was gonna bite him in the butt at some point. Especially when Mushi, as well as mid one, now walk underneath the Dire Observer Ward into the Dire Jungle. They're very, very visible. And Fear in Universe, yep, there it is, the Iron Shell over on Fear. Surging him in so he can catch up to mid one. The iron shell damage starts over on mid one and he realizes he can't get himself away. Universal come over, they well, got the double iron shell. That's a really good stun though, with a follow-up from Mushi, the lightning damage, but of course you've already got the greaves up. But and Mushi really has to BKB to get himself out of here. Yep. With the TP. That's uh They're just rolling in the money. And Ned's just waiting with his Chen army. He's been here for the last minute. 
hoping for an opportunity. And PBD is it. Ohio jumps in. There goes Shafin's grip. And Ohio, well, there's no damage from the Wrath of Nature, but they have enough physical to get through PPD. Only just, though. Like, that's how much effort you have to put into killing off the Witch Doctor. The only, buy gonna need it, the only buyback they've got is over on the Nature's Prophet. Actually, that's even worse, because Arteezy, he can just buy back and BT back in if he wants to. Now the attack, Arteezy with a Storm Bolt, only on the mid one, but he is first up with the Iron Shell mid one. The Hand of God cannot keep him alive. Arteezy is stunned up. They forced off him away to safety as PPD lets the Death Ward rip a lot of damage into DJ, but no real kill. Mushi! 1399, he goes down! You got 1453 on that crit! Okay, you cannot repel physical damage of that magnitude. EG takes the game 24-7 against Fnatic, and oh my. It took until that last little attack for Fnatic to actually admit this is over. And realistically, if you look at the like, over the course of the game. It's felt like since minute... I don't know, since minute 10, you had a good feeling that EG were winning this game, and around minute 20, it's just almost over. Like, Fnatic have to accomplish so much. They got quite a few towers, like we talked about, but they, they have to sacrifice way, way, way too many kills in the process.